What's going on, people? Welcome to the first ever episode of the match preview where we look ahead to the game on the weekend against Leicester. If you do enjoy the show, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and leave down your comments below where we'll be reading them out throughout the week. Joined by Patrick T. Stan, got full house here for the brand new show. Look, gents, we've got Leicester on the weekend. We're coming off a win against Leeds. And now, how I see it, it's time to build some momentum. So, I'll start off with you, T, but what's your thoughts going into this game? Is it a game where we should be winning? Where we're talking about the form, considering what we've done against Leeds and the games that we've got coming up? 100%. And when you're talking about uh, form, when you're talking about the quality of opponent that we've played up to this point, um, this is definitely a, a, a match where we should be taking three points and, and looking up the table. I mean, I think right now it's only uh, one point between us and, what, something like eighth place? Something like that. Something crazy. Yeah, we'll talk about the league table as well. We'll show the yeah. league table in a second. So it's, it's, a, it's a chance for us to, to really make some moves uh, through these next few games. Yeah, Stan, looking at it um, in general, um, going into this game, we talked about, we're going to talk about Leicester's form. But looking at Palace side of things, you've been quite upset with the start that we've had. After this win against Leeds, um, do you think games like Leicester, side that is struggling, that does have quality in, in them, in all honesty, that just hasn't come out so far this season, do you think it could be also a hurdle for Palace going into this game? I don't know if it'll be as straightforward as some make it out to be. I know they've been struggling, but they've still got some quality players there. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as sort of like some people make it out to be. Um, listen, I think, um, you know, in hindsight, we did have quite a tricky start. Obviously, I think, like I said, some mistakes where we obviously conceded late goals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think we showed, the team showed what they can do on Sunday with obviously a comeback from behind and you know beating the team around them but it's not going to be easy um we haven't won up there in a while actually um in fact yeah. we haven't beaten leicester in, in about five games um so yeah they've still got you know they've got tielemans they've got madison they still got vardy who loves a goal against us so yeah harvey barnes you know they're struggling but they still got good players so we should uh we shouldn't think it's going to be a walkover absolutely so let's so let's look at the league table. Let's look at the league table ahead of the game. Uh, Pre-game week 10, of course, we've got some games in hand uh, due to the postponement of games. Right now, we sit 15th in the table, nine points. If we win this game, we could potentially go up to eighth. So, Patrick, when you're looking at the league table and you're looking at Leicester's form, surely you must be thinking similar to what I am in terms of, you know, this could be a very good opportunity for us to look above, the, uh, higher up the table rather than down because... So far, we've been 17th, 16th, 15th. And if we win this game, we could potentially go up to maybe 8th, which would be incredible. Well, we're the first game for the weekend, right? Or the second game? If there's a, is there a game on Friday or no? Oh, no, there's a Friday game. There's a Friday, Friday game. Second game. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm guessing if we win the game, we get to 12 point, we'd be behind Bournemouth on about eight, about ninth or 10th. So that would be great. But um, can't take it for granted. Listen. Leicester are having a lot of problems. I don't know what's going on because they have quality players in Tielemans and Vardy and Barnes and, of course, Madison. I'm not sure what's going on with that team. They, you know, the one in the previous game, now they've lost. So they've, they've lost four of the last five games. It's a big match for, for Leicester. It's a big match for their manager. If they lose, I can't see him surviving, honestly. Uh, so I'm not taking it for granted that we can win the game. I was very happy with the win against Leeds. There are things we still have to work mm -hmm. out there. But as far as games going forward, I think that, you know, we're in a good spot now. We've got some we're very winnable games of the next four or five games. This is the start of it. You know, we've got to build on that Leeds win. We've got to build on it. So I'm not thinking for granted. Uh, Stan makes a great point. We haven't won up there. We're not beating them in a very long time. Some draws, but not beating them. And you can't take, you know, less for granted. But they're in the mud. I mean, you're going to the stats later on. Their goalkeeper, Danny Ward, is very, very poor. He's very, very poor. So... There's an opportunity there for us to score. We don't score against, we don't score at least two against them on Saturday. It's it's going to be poor. But I mean, he's faced 43 shots this season. He's allowed 24 goals. I mean, yeah. there's only one keeper I could think of. It's pretty and bad. He's <laughs> even close to being as bad as that, honestly. I've, I've, so, well, yeah, look, I've already said it. I, I He's the worst goalkeeper in the Premier League. Maybe Dean Henderson can't save long range shots, but I, I, I still believe that Dean Henderson probably really better than Danny Ward. But yeah. if we don't score two goals in this game, let's just not even count it as a win. Because when you're looking at the goalkeeper, he's just, he's, he's what the one player that we, we can know what, in this game. You said that don't count it as a win, but 
I know, obviously, Forest aren't a great side, but they went up there. Obviously, Leicester got the first win of their season um, up there. I think we've got to be careful. We've definitely got the players to beat this team. We should, you know, go out there and, and just do what we've got to do. It's good to see Elise getting a run of games and, you know, hopefully he can keep, the, he, you know, he, he can build on everything. But, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> Danny Ward, and what's it called? Just win and that will be important. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I think the win is more important, but it just shows with the quality of Elise, Edward, which we'll talk about as well, and Zaha, Eze on the pitch, I think with the creative outlet that we got, we should be getting a few goals in this game. But we mentioned about the their form, uh, recent form, and Stan, I think it was you that mentioned about the last five matches, and I didn't realise this, but we've got zero wins. Zero, zero wins against yeah, Leicester yeah. in the last five matches, and Leicester's won the game three times, we've drawn against them twice, for me, I remember when we faced them at home last season where it was 2-0 down, we brought the game back. It's, am I fair in saying that maybe they're the one side that we tend to struggle against regardless of their form? Because they weren't that great last season as well. I think they're one of a few sides that we tend to struggle against. They seem to always have our number in some ways. Um, like I said, Vardy loves scoring against us as well. So we need to be careful. But I think it's, you know, it's about time that we, you know, that, that we gave him a beating, really. So let's see what happens. Yeah, Patrick. When you look at the last last five matches, just in general, their form, they've got loss, um, three losses. In fact, yeah, four. They should have four losses there and four one win. Five, yeah, yeah right. one win, and that one win was against Nottingham Forest, that has been struggling all season long. Now, when you look at our four and our, how Leicester's got three wins, two draws against us, and you look at their last five games. Does that still give you a bit of confidence? Look, they're not playing that great, but it seems like they always turn up against us. Yeah, I mean, the issue is, I mean, their home form, they've played four, they've won one, drawn one, lost two, scored seven, conceded five. Um, they got four of their, four, their only four points have been at home. So, again, my issue is that they need a performance for their manager at some point. At some point, listen, Rodgers is not going to walk away. He's not walking out of the contract. It's not going to happen. Either they fire him or he stays. To me, the players seem to giving up on him. You know they sold for Fana, um, one of the obviously one of the best defenders they have. They didn't they didn't buy anybody. They did they basically didn't buy anybody in, in the entire window, which is very strange. You know they won the FA Cup a couple of years ago, but they were good. Listen, I rate I rate the manager. I think they're a decent team. I just don't understand what's going on with them. So I'm worried about they might put a performance together against us. I mean, that's the Palace way, right? I'm hoping we get the win, but I'm not taking for granted that this is an easy win. They are not a great side on form currently but that doesn't mean that they can't put a performance together and as again as you and Stan just said they we tend to play not great it's mainly been Rogers if you look before them we won it was frequently won like four games straight against them when, in early when they when they came back to the Premier League but it's just been it hasn't been great but again last year we were down to another home got the two two the gaming I'm not counting the game after the FA Cup but that was just a down performance in general two one loss was just an awful performance even though you know Wolf got the goal but uh, you know, I, I feel that we're on the ascendancy. We've gotten through the hard part of our schedule so far. Eight leads. You know how important this game is. It's a big fillip for us to get this win and move us up the table. I think the players will be up for it. But I just hope that, again, that we catch a really poor um, side. And again, listen, if you have a poor goalkeeper, it tends to run through the side. And Danny Wood, as you said, he's probably the worst keeper in the... Uh, he's not poor. He's the worst keeper in the league. He exactly. Just Let's just get that right. <laughs> I reckon he's... Imagine, the imagine, I think he's probably the worst goalie in the top two divisions. He's got to be. Watch him now play a blinder, keep a clean sheet. But <laughs> that's what I was just thinking about. What, if he keeps a clean sheet, we might as well just lick. That's on us, though. Club. That's on us. I mean, if we can leave yeah, the sheet, that's uh, all. If he keeps a clean sheet with all those players that we could potentially have uh, available, then that is that would be very worrying. That's but despite that, look, we we talked about Leicester's form. Uh, but Patrick, you made a very good point. They've still got very good individual talent there, and they've shown yeah. it at some point, especially with their attack. The attacking play, they've scored a few goals against, even against Tottenham inside. That's very solid defensively. They went to their ground and scored two goals, but it was the defence that let them down. I believe this, they conceded like five or six goals. In That's that the issue. Their central defence yeah. is the issue. So, so in terms of attacking plays that we that we should be looking at, who are we most worried about? Um, I'll start off with you, T. Um, who are you looking at this Leicester side? There's one player that you should say first and foremost. I don't know if you'll say him, but who are you most worried about? Are we kidding? The ageless wonder, Jamie Vardy. Like, no, James what? Madison. Madison. No, absolutely not. I'm worried about Jamie, Jamie Vardy old ass because somehow he always scores against us. I don't know how. <laughs> he always does. He does. He does. Now, he does. He now, 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 
James Madison is in amazing form. I will not forget that. And I actually, I hope he gets considered for the, the England national team with the form that he's in because he's playing better than guys like Mason Mount. But I digress. I think I, I think he's the he's the guy that that really is going to set them up. The 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 player that really hurt us last time. I remember last season when we played Leicester was the Dewsbury Hall guy. Yep, yeah, away. That's he kicked yeah, our yeah. tail. He hurt us hard. Yeah, yeah. He, he scored, he scored a big, big goal from outside the area. Yeah, yeah. So they got. I mean, they got really they got really good guys going forward, man. I mean, I, I cannot deny that. A couple of things though. The last time we beat them, their manager got the boot. Mm. If, and if, the if fans they... want Rogers out, and if you look at, I've I've watched a few of their fan cams, um, especially after Bournemouth, they were singing "We want Rogers out." So, was that the match where we went crazy at the end? Uh, it was the end of the season where we had like five goals against them when we had Michi yeah. Bashuai. No, it was the, the year no. after we beat them four one up there. Mm. So yeah, it, it, look, it has been a while for me. I think it's James Madison. Um, they've also a quick mention to Tielemans. I think he's a very good player as well. Um, they, the they've got good attack. Yeah, the yeah. Stand is a good player. Um, got- Iniacho is a good player. Listen, every time we've beaten them, they've had good players, mate. Like we've beaten five nil. They had Mares, Vardy, and you know, yep. God knows who else in that team. So yep. you just got to turn up yep. and play your game, play it well, and you know, I think we'll. I but think- where they're not good is central defense and goalkeeper. That's the, the that's, that's, well, they're not that's good is the, right the down the middle. Main, I mean, yeah, that's their problem. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we still have to watch issue. out for their attacking players. That's, that's no, I, I, I agree with that. We, to, I agree we, can't with just, that but... we can't just go into the game thinking it's Leicester, they're doing poor. They've still got quality in that side, and maybe Absolutely. the quality is not showing him back in defense and in goal, but quality is still showing in midfield because James <laughs> Madison has been on form. I don't mm-hmm. understand how he's not getting called up to the English squad. Oh, he's about... the player. Yeah, uh, he can he can turn up. There, there's players that have turned up this season and can turn up in this game that we need to be solid defensively. Now, yeah. when we're looking at our side of things, for Palace, who are we look, most looking to perform in this game? The one name that gets mentioned, Patrick, we, we laugh about, joke about it, but Edward, his goal-scoring form. He When we're talking about Leicester conceded so many goals, you expect yeah. him once again, if he gets the opportunity, to get another goal. This could be a very nice streak for him facing against the side that's struggling defensively. If he does get the service... Hopefully, can continue. I think Edward would be one of the key players in this game in terms of us getting a result. He's going up against a brand new Belgium um, central defender in Fires and they and Johnny Evans. I mean, he's very confident now. You can tell by the interviews post match. We didn't even see a, a Edward post match interview in in months, and I'm really happy to see him talking because that shows that when interview player, it means that he's doing well. His confidence level is way up. Um, so for me, he should be having a field day on Saturday yeah. against those. So he just really should be. He's confidence back again. As someone mentioned before about his hold up play has, has has gone up levels, which is great to see, you know, his ability to, you know, that poacher ability, the same goal that he scored uh, on Saturday. I didn't think he scored a goal like that Sunday, sorry. Just that getting in the, at the end of, of a header like that on a great ball. By the way, another key is having Olise on set pieces is massive for us. Okay. He's better than Luca. He's, to me, he's even better than Eze. His delivery is great. He and Edward have something going on as far as getting on the end of it. So that's great. But that's going to be key for us. And yep. and honestly, my only issue, honestly, is the midfield three again. Because I, I don't want, again, to see Decoy to overwork. If he gets an early yellow card, it's going to be a problem. He's doing all the tackling midfield. But possibly now I'm thinking that maybe the reason why uh, Vieira started that midfield three against Chelsea then leave with the build up to teams like Leicester and Wolves because maybe against those kind of teams that are not great defensively, we can be on the front foot more and score more goals. Because again, our goal is to score two, three goals and that will put pressure, less pressure on our defense. But again, more pressure on them. If let's give up two early goals against us, that fans going to be all over them on Saturday, all over them. And that's going to be key. They're yeah. giving up four goals, five goals and six goals this season already. So yeah. they're, they're the very fragile. Toxic. The stadium yeah. will turn toxic exactly. up there. That'll be key. So. If, if, if we get, on, yeah. get on their back. I, I will say as well, I agree with Patrick what he's saying now. I think if you can have a lease, say, beating his man and pinging those balls in the box, um, then against that defence and against that goalkeeper, then it's highly likely that Edward can have some... Uh, yeah, he can, he can have a bit of joy. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, T, um, another aspect that Patrick mentioned about is the midfield. In this game, when you're talking about the likes of James Madison, who's been on form, it will be, I think, another key is that the core is starting and also he's on Madison because... Ideally, if you want to win this game, you have to take out Madison from the equation. And I feel like we've got a player to do that. 
But then again, it's, it's important for Decore not to get only yellow card like he did against Leeds yep. and him for, for him to be fit for the 90 minutes. Do you think Decore would also be the key on the other side of things in terms of us getting a good result? I think in order for us to have success, Decore has to be playing and playing well. We all know that. I think uh, I think the thing right for him, he's, he's, been in, he's been in great form all season, which is great for us. It's just a matter of how overworked he's going to be in that midfield. I think we could be more attacking with that same midfield that we started uh, in the last couple of matches, but um, I would I would like to see him get a little bit more help defensively, especially in this type of match, because like you said, you want somebody like the Kure to be, you know, kind of like a sign slash watching out for Madison. Great. Who's going to deal with Yuri Tillemans? You know what I mean? I think so, um, Vieira switched it though in the second half, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And, and it's like it's like, do we go with what he switched to? Yeah, I think you go first. start with what he switched to, and then so let's see what happens. But it seemed to so work. let's talk about that. So let's talk about that. <laughs> do, do we do we think that Jordan Ayu should start in the number eight role? Because it seemed like when he was playing there, he offered a bit more balance. Patrick, you're you're saying no. You're, you're no. shaking your head. I like. So the why would you want him to start there? I like the flexibility of having him and at least say switch. I don't want him to start there. I think he's more comfortable on the outside. He drew the foul. You know, you the foul that led to the free kick that Lucy's put in for Edward. He draws mm. fouls playing out wide. I'd rather have him have out there. My only issue with midfield is that Olise and as they have to be on the ball more, control the game by possessing the ball, yep. not have to decoy tackle as much. If we could do that, we'd be fine. Now, I, I like how it started out as far as having them in there. It just doesn't, it didn't go to, to plan. If mm. it doesn't work out, then switch are you inside and put Olise outside. I'd ra much rather have Olise and Eze in there to control the ball more, frustrate Leicester by keeping the ball away from them and have the Corey behind him as a shield. If it's not working out, you've got the flexibility to switch it up again, where he, which he did on Saturday, which, Sunday, sorry, and, and move it around. But I, honestly, I know everybody's getting this whole Jordan Ayo the number eight, and I understand it later in the match, but I honestly would rather have Olise start where he started because he and Le Eze have a good understanding, as does Edouard. They switch a lot. And I'd rather have that flexibility than having it start that way and then being forced now to push Jordan. You know, if he doesn't work out, push Jordan back outside when we're perhaps down a goal. So I'd honest, I'd rather it start the way we started on. I, I just want to keep building on the, those three in the middle, see if it works, mm -hmm. as opposed to just say, okay, two games, it's not working out, let's stop it already. You know what I mean? I talk about the thing with Edward beginning of the season, get Edward to run of games. Mm -hmm. Give him a bit of run of games. Give him a couple more games. And if it doesn't work out, then maybe towards maybe Wolves or later on, we might say, okay, it's not working out, let's put it, are you in the middle? That kind of thing. I mean, it is an easier adjustment if they're both on the pitch at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's, it's not like we have to make. It's not like we have to make yeah. a sub like a in sub. order to, exactly. it, to, to make so. that change. Yep. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, uh, talking about injury concerns, there shouldn't be any injury, new injury concerns um, going into this game from so far from what we've heard in a week. The the usuals. Um, it seemed like everyone from the Leeds game had done well. There was no substitution related injuries. <laughs> Um, so there's Nathaniel Klein that should be out. Um, Richards, we're not too sure if he'll be ready yet. Uh, of course, uh, Maka and Ferguson also out. Um, we've got a strong squad. So let's move on to the final section of the show, the score prediction. We've got a strong squad. Um, despite having Klein and Richards out, we've been talking about our players who can step up to the plate. So let's go around with score predictions. And um, we've talked about the game. We've talked about how important it is to win. T, um, I'll go back to you. Later, you seem like you're excited about your score prediction. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm uh, thinking oh, about you're still it. thinking about it. Well, look, I'm yeah. going to start off with Stan. Stan, Leicester versus Palace, 12 30 kickoff on Saturday. How do you see it going? Um, I'm going to go 2 0 Palace. Yeah, 2 0 Palace. Patrick, uh, I was looking at the last three um, uh, Leicester matches, they gave up a lot of goals from the seventh minute on, a lot of late goals. So I'm hoping that by that time, if we're up maybe 2-1, we get a late goal. I'm going to go 3-1 Palace. Scorers, Edward 2, Zaha 1, and Madison scores for Leicester. Oh, Edward 2 goals, man. That, that would be lovely. Just to make you happy, I said that, by the way. Exactly. I, I, Mateta's going to get two. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get two in the warm-up. Um, T, um, so with you, fight. well, not finally, I'm going to give my score prediction as well. <laughs> well, how do, you, how do you see this game going? You, you're saying... You, you're getting excited by it. You're getting excited by it. I'm being completely honest. I was going to go 3 1. What Ooh. Patrick said, I was. But now I'm going to say 3 0 Palace statement win. Ooh. Ooh. 
You know what? I think this is a massive game for us. The Leeds game doesn't mean anything if we lose against Leicester. If we want to build a bit of momentum, push up the table as we looked at the league table, we could push up to eighth. For me, I'm going for a 2-0 Palace victory. Be so defensively. They've still got a threat, but we've got a solid back line. I know there's a, maybe a weakness there with maybe Joe Wards at right back. That's a debate for another day. But I still feel like we've got decent enough players, enough attacking players to go and score two goals, beat Leicester away from home 2-0 and get the momentum going. Of course, let's have your say. Let us know your score predictions in the comment section down below and how you see the game going. Also, it's our first show. Send us your feedback, what you liked, didn't like about the show. And, you know, we're going to build on it from every week onwards now. But this is the first match preview show done and dusted. And until next time, up the palace. Out of the palace.